Evening. How's it going? Welcome back. Here we are live and in person again. I'm Carlos and this is my beautiful bride, Chantel. <laughs> Woo! What a day. <laughs> How was your day, beautiful? Good. For those of you that don't know us, <laughs> we uh, actually... Oh my goodness. That's <laughs> alive and raw and real, and I'm tired. I can't even think as well. Well, we are Carlos Edgetel, and we have been, we are from Epicure Life, creating an extraordinary, and our specialty is marriage mastery. We love to bring tips and stuff on our YouTube channel for um, things in romance, communication and also conflict resolution is some of our favorite uh, things to talk about and help people through. But on Mondays, this is a special day because we don't edit, we don't do anything, we just go live. And we are, we are raw and real and we're tired. It's been a long day, but we love to meet with our clients. Monday is both Chantel and I's busiest days, meeting with our clients. And uh, we learn so much working with them through mentorship, helping them in these areas of life, of relationships, and helping them to have better skills. And so yeah. we end our day. We haven't even had a conversation <laughs> really today, <laughs> except for this morning. We always have our morning connection time. And uh, and then here we are tonight. So we always kind of cap it off at the end of the night with all, all that's been going on. So how was your day, my love? It was pretty busy. So did you have a theme? for the day <laughs> well <clears throat> so the theme of the day for me really was more about um doing the work right there was um there was some some interesting conversations that i had and recognizing that <clears throat> we all have different ways of doing work Right. How how do we press in when we deal with the shit that happens? <laughs> right. Yep. The shit, the bullshit. Yep. And um do we do we get lazy and avoid the work or do we press in? And then there's the how, right? How do we press in? How do we how do we do the work when we've been triggered, right? <clears throat> there was an interesting conversation that, that I had. Um, and we talked about, you know, different uh, backgrounds, different cultural things, different religious stuff. You know, then there's this topic of um, casting out demons, right? So in a lot of religious realms, there's this, this solution for the stuff that we deal with, right? The triggers, the trauma, the illness, all of those mm -hmm. things that we know in a world of, you know, working through traumas and triggers, we know in a world of like psychology and then even health and wellness, right? That there's a lot of stuff that comes up internally that manifests externally, right? And so then the religious world decides they want to go in and just cast out the demon. Okay, so the conversation and, and it's an interesting topic because, you know, and that's why I say, how, how do you work? Like, what is the work that you do and how do you do it? Right. Are you one of those who just sees everything as, you know, a spiritual battle and, you know, I'm going to go cast out the demons or do you, you know, see, uh, you know, something that manifests as a trigger and a root, there's a root cause of it, right? There's an experience that was there. There's a belief that was there. Mm, so um, good. And then there's this, you know, uh, behavior that comes from it, right? It's the response from the trigger, from the, the thing. And so, you know, so we have a process. It's called Triggers to Triumph. And um, it's something that a lot of our clients utilize. And the conversation was you know, that of such of the awareness of the difference, like what is the difference, you know, between the casting out of demons, 
you know, just the belief that it's just going to wipe it clean. But then the next trigger that comes, like it comes back tenfold and we have extra to deal with because we're just frustrated that we haven't dealt with the issue. Hmm. Um, so, you know, recognizing that some of my clients were, we're talking about like the beautiful way that we're able to do the work to process through and why, right? right? Sure. Why, why that's so beneficial um, recognizing that, you know, we go from the identifying of the, the trigger, identifying the root system, the belief, all of those things <clears throat> going through the forgiveness and the healing into the pursuit of understanding, mm. right? Okay. So when we can pursue understanding and we understand, you know, the why behind some of other people's behaviors that have affected us, right? Then we get to operate from a place of compassion and empathy. Um, so that is sort of, you know, a snippet of our process. And, and the, so the conversation was that. And so, you know, really just identifying, you know, are you even willing to do the work? How many people get stuck and they don't do any of it, right? It's not that casting out demons or identifying spiritual stuff is bad. It's just, what are you doing? Are you running from it? Are you avoiding your triggers? Are you just ignoring it? Are you like, um, what what kind of bird is that? An ostrich that puts their head in the sand and just, you know, <laughs> pretends it doesn't exist, right? So how do you do the work? Well, I think you bring up amazing, amazing point of just, first of all, I think going back and understanding, like we often have to. Cheers, by the way. Cheers, babe. Been a long day. She's fired up though. It's good. I think, you know, in your experience, which that's we don't talk about that enough. 25 years before we ever met, over 11 years, and uh I don't even know, 11 years. Who knows how many kids you worked with from the the infants all the way up to kids aging out of the system at 18, abused and neglected children that were pulled from their homes in California for over 11 years, you work with, you know, hundreds, thousands, potentially over the years, over the 25 years, you and I've worked together. You mm -hmm. definitely worked with thousands of people. But what I wanted to say is, would you say that a trigger is always connected to some sort of trauma? Has there, I mean, isn't there something that there always is? And most of the time people try to relate it to their current situation, current spouse, current person that triggered them when really it goes back to something potentially or most of the time I would in say their formative years it right? doesn't even have to be a trauma mm -hmm. it can be just an experience right an experience that causes a belief but would you say the definition of even what a trigger would be is something that probably is connected to trauma and that's why they keep experiencing over and over and creating those scenarios too which then of course that's then where the spiritual world comes in mm -hmm. calls it a possession because they see these people continuing to do the same thing over and over and have a the same reaction they get triggered and they freak out right um it's real like it, i've seen this and i've seen people even go through these scenarios and and or you know they're they're emotional like really emotional mm -hmm. and when they get triggered and well, paralyzed yeah i mean there's so many yeah. different scenarios right and then they're repeating mm -hmm. the story essentially but they may be repeating the last story that someone did to them but it may be connected to something deeper or something farther behind, further from before. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because of the fact that I think a lot of times understanding where it comes from can help us and know that, again, it's it's not about blaming other people's, but it's not our fault in the sense of what we went through that experience created those that story, which created the triggers, which then when we when we get triggered like you do something to me um, we went through this my insecurities when we were first married I had a lot of insecurities and I actually wanted it to think it was abandonment or issues from my divorce from my previous wife but actually went farther back and the reason why I'm talking about this because it all connects back <laughs> I know I know uh, to the understanding of doing the work because if I can make it about a demon, <laughs> I mean, seriously, that's what 
Uh, um, you know, that's what, uh, <clears throat> what do you call it? I also, my mind religious. religious things, but the, um, to release someone from a demon, what's that called? Casting out. Casting out demons. There you go. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. You can tell it's a long day. So the point being, though, it's like if we blame a demon, right? Again, it, it doesn't make us be responsible to do the work. That's right. what I'm saying. So, and then what <laughs> happens is it's very real and okay. practical. Is like I cast that out, so I should be healed. But yet the reality is you haven't changed the habit. Yeah. The trigger is the habit well or the belief system creates the action the belief is what has solidified in us that recreates the same programming over and over right and we over. keep doing the same action right right it's because, because that belief is right like, and the belief your belief you can prove someone's belief just watch their actions your actions are proven your beliefs are proven by your actions so if you believe it's true you're going to act on it so then that trigger creates that and i don't know if this is making <laughs> sense but it's it feels so much easier and better to release it. And don't get me wrong, it's good to have a marking point where you're making a decision. And that's what I believe. And I've done some of this and been a part of it where they are casting out these demons, you know, and, and setting people free. And the crazy thing is it works as a marker for them to go, okay, I'm making a decision. I'm going to do something different. Here's the challenge. Still work. Are you willing to do the work, like Chantel said? And what is that work? So I, I was, this is another thing that's so crazy that you're talking about this, which has nothing to do with what we talked about as guys today, but it's so good. So we're going to stay there yeah. because you connected to what I have felt. And I love, uh, I love going to church. However, what I recognize in the church or religious settings, what happens is a lot of times, again, similar to this, they focus on the eternal damnation. So it doesn't make you responsible for your current actions, the work, the little work, the little daily activities that you do. So then now, oh, well, you know, I just need to save my soul from eternal hell and death and fire and brimstone. So I get saved and then I have this big like redemption process and then I need to continuously redeem or continuously ask for forgiveness or recommit my life because I had these things I'm not doing or I had bad thoughts or I was sinning in some way. Right. So then I have to recommit my life. And so we go through this cycle of, of going through the sin and then coming back, redemption, redemption, redemption. And so why that happens is because we're focused on the eternal or the bigger thing when really we should be focused on the little things. We should be focused on the little things we do every day that create the big things. But that's the challenge because I don't get, this is we've, we've 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 faced this and i'm not looking for credit but it's crazy when we help people with their cycles <laughs> they make the decision to change the daily routines and do it then really they no longer need us <laughs> which is super cool because it becomes about the process of them choosing daily the little things that they do well and they get to own that and then it takes them to a bigger result that's really what life is about. That's It's just like, oh, man, you see people preaching about these affairs and adultery. And we talk about marriage. Like, it starts in the daily things that we do. Not in, like, all of a sudden, she just had an affair. I mean, or all of a sudden, I just had an affair because, you know, screw it, I'm done. No, it was the little things over time, over time, over time, over time. Compound, compound, compound. And then you're just like, throw up your hands. And what are those little things, right? Like, I mean, there's so much that, that can cause damage in marriage right before they're even that catastrophic thing there's the lack of value the lack of being heard seen um, that's right right there's there's the lack of priority that's right choosing not to make a date night that's communication a issues mm -hmm. um choosing not to make time and connect right on a regular basis not only conflict resolution but avoiding communication mm -hmm. period Right. I mean, there's so there's so you said something the other day and it was super cool because it's like, <laughs> wait, what, what, how can that be? And like, if you really think about what sin is, if you go back to the meaning and definition of what sin is, it, it's a lot simpler than people think. It's like, what? It's called missing the mark. <laughs> so if I have a goal and a target and, and I miss it, did I sin? <laughs> now you go study it. But the point is where that missing the mark is. 
Because if I have a target and I'm a 16th inch off and I go a thousand feet, after a thousand feet, am I still a 16th of an inch off? No, you're actually way off because the mark you set was actually wrong. The target you were going towards was wrong. So you said something that was profound. You were like, it's choosing not to get up in the morning. And I was like, whoa, now that's like, that's like so good. It's the littlest things. And you're like, that's silly. How can that be? That's true. Wait, what? Choosing to not get up in the morning, right? Hit the snooze button. Oh. You were saying that the other day and I was like, wow, like that seems so insignificant. Well, it was a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> but it well, because it was that whole thing about the, the things in church. We were talking about how sin was this big adultery and the the, the forgiveness at you need to come forward and get right. redeemed because you had this sin in your life and they focus on the big thing that comes out. And she was like, it's actually just choosing not to get up in the morning because in the, in that's so real for what we do. Like we, all we can do is tell you what we do in our example. And literally we get up every weekday morning and we connect the time you can, it takes you to drink 30 or 30 minutes to drink a cup of coffee. We connect. It's our connection time. And it really does create our epic relationship. So it's it's real how it's like the little things. Mm-hmm. So how was your day? <laughs> I don't even know, man. I got to try to think about it. It's a lot today and a lot of great things. And I'm serious. We have the best community on the planet. We have amazing people that are so hungry. And we just get to be a part of it. You know, I love the swarm. I do feel that way. Like if you didn't know this fun fact, I've studied the swarm. That the queen bee is not the leader. It's just another worker and another assignment. That everyone has their assignments and everyone's working. We get the assignment of doing what we do and being able to lead by example. And some of the people we work with are just astounding. It's been cool to see some of our men in our leadership group rise up. And the the calls I had today with people that are just so hungry. They want change. They want different than what their parents had. And I can say that too. I mean, again, it doesn't make my parents bad. They were doing better than what their parents did, right? <laughs> and so all I want is to do better as well. And But I want epic. I don't want to settle. And we were talking about this. One of the calls was about confidence. Mm. Okay. What do you do, Mr. Ill? What do you do if someone's making fun of you? And what if they're making fun of you because what you're doing makes them uncomfortable because your standards are much higher than theirs. So they want to make fun of you instead of stepping up. Mm-hmm. And I've had to deal with this. Not making fun of me. I've had people actually belittle me and try to put me down because of my standards when it comes to being a father and a husband. And I make a lot of people nervous. I've lost friendships because of it. This is real. Lost friendships because of it. Because I work really, really, let's go back to what you say, really, really hard. Mm-hmm. If you outwork me when it comes to being a husband and a father, then I'll listen and learn from you. I know that sounds so arrogant, but I've done it <laughs> for a long time. We're going on 14 years, and I promise you, I'm the first one up. I'm usually the last one to go to bed, and I'm working on stuff for us, for our family for our dreams, for our goals, for our kids, getting up early with my son for many years, getting up early with our daughter, getting up early together. Like we do the work and we keep doing the work. It's not going to stop. Well, it's, I think the, the, the truth of the matter is, is people, people get comfortable on autopilot, right? Um, what Carlos is talking about is consistent 14 years of intentionality. So, so, you know, really, that is a standard that not a lot of people are willing. I mean, let's look at, you know, just the societal uh, battle of going to the freaking gym every New Year's that they're like, 
my new year's resolution is to, you know, go to the gym and, and work out, right? Like how many people can say that they are very intentional and 365 days a year for 14 years? That's what I've seen. And that's what we've been and created. And, you know, that doesn't mean we're perfect. That doesn't mean we don't get hit by shit storms and, yeah. and catastrophes, trauma, like we, our family has been through the ringer. But we always have a default strategy. That and keeps we us show moving, up keeps us intentionally, moving. right? We show up intentionally, even in the midst of it. You know, yeah, like <clears throat> life happens. Or what do we, what is our answer to that, right? What is our answer to the shit storm? Mm -hmm. What is your answer? Are you willing to do the work? Are you willing to put in a little bit more work? Right. <laughs> that time is rough. Like my go-to, like for years, has always been like 444. Like that's my time. Uh, for years, it was like my time connection. I like that number. So it's like, okay, well, I'll get up and be going and be intentional um, by 444. And man, I can not remember how long ago that started. I've always been like, and so many people are like, well, you're a morning person. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Come see me on Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> I love to sleep in. Sometimes she drag my ass out of bed on Sunday. She's like, come on, time to get up. <laughs> you're going to stay in bed? <laughs> yeah, I want to stay in bed. I like to sleep, man. I do. I'm not a morning person. I'm a disciplined person. And I know that it takes work. I'm willing to do the work and then through our hard work then we we help others to not have to do as much because we've gone through the refinement to make it more efficient doesn't mean there's no work involved <laughs> it just means that we've got the some strategies and, and tools to help you get there faster that's what it comes down to and so uh, yeah it was cool because there's a lot of things about confidence and oh i've got it i've got it written down this is a new i, I had a new phrase today <laughs> where yes here it is it's so good i can remember it ready <laughs> write this one down you can quote me on it because it's a good one if you're working on confidence you got to do confidence before you ever be confident mm -hmm. hear me again that's the work it's all tied together before you ever can become confident, you have to do confident. Okay. And it looks different for everyone. However, you got to do it. You got to do it. And and sometimes it, we're, we're dealing with a situation where this guy is really amazing. Like he's on it, on it. Kind of like me with husbands and fathers and the work and going after it, right? Willing to put in the work. And the extra work, <laughs> and he's the same way in his job and in what he's good at. And man, he's one of the best on the planet in what he does. Okay. Without his permission, I won't disclose it, but he is. He's one of the best on the planet. And people are teasing him because he's so hard worker, so efficient, and so <clears throat> legendary. And yet, like it affects him. He's like, he was like, man, what, what do I do about this? I'm like, you tell them. To either step up or get the hell out of your way. Like, seriously. I mean, I, for a lot of years, I apologized for my passion. I did. I'll be honest. And I'm sure some of you have. I'm done with that. I'm not apologizing for my passion. You either step up and be a good husband and a good father or stay single, please. <laughs> like, that's my passion. I want fathers to be awesome and I want husbands to be awesome. And you're worthy of then having an epic marriage. <laughs> so. It's good. That's a good life, babe. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> and believe me, like she said, you know, we go through our stuff. I promise you. A lot of times people think, well, they got it so good. If we tell you some of the Stuff we've been through, you'd be like, never mind. I'll keep mine. Everyone thinks that. Like, they hear someone else's story and the crap they're going through. And like, oh my gosh, wow. I'll just go ahead and keep mine because yours is really rough. So we we have a story. Everyone does. And we'd love to hear yours. Seriously. Love to connect with you.
Um, we love our community and, and our people will love you just like we do. They're, that's what they do. And so you can find us over on uh, epic or school.com with a K um, S K O O L.com forward slash Epic your life where we're creating extraordinary for us. Our focus is definitely on marriage and making marriage great again. <laughs> <laughs> Take another drink. <laughs> Pun intended. And make a decision. That was the other part that was really huge with our men's group. <clears throat> we use a lot, a lot of really good spiritual stuff. <laughs> I used to do the same to not make a decision. Mm. Let me just pray about it. You've been praying. Let me just ask God. I always take time to make decisions. Yep, that's why you're behind everyone else. Because <laughs> I'm, I know I'm behind because of my lack of making decisions at times. Seriously, it's real. It's real. Like I've studied billionaires and hundred millionaires, and I'm like, man, their speed of decision is phenomenal. So know that. And hopefully someday you'll believe that. <laughs> but we did. We talked a lot. The men, we got a long conversation about decisions. And leaders, they make decisions, even though they may not be the right ones. That'll mess with you. But they're willing to make them. That's why they're the leaders. So. Awesome. Well, on that note, we're going to say goodnight. Yes. The okay. porch is calling our name. Hope we'll see you uh, next week. <laughs> it's time to just chill on the porch. But you guys have a nice week. And we'll see you next week. Thanks for being here for our live. Good night.